Jan Mostert was born in the city of Harlem in about the year 1475. Mostert was born into a noble family, but not much else is known about his family or his lineage. Mostert was very talented and was first part of a group of artists that experimented with their own imaginative style of realism. Unfortunately, while in this group, most of Mostert's work was destroyed in a fire. However, his work attracted the attention of royals and thus became the court portraitist of Margaret of Austria, daughter of Maximilian, Holy Roman Emperor. On his travels with Margaret of Austria, he painted many of her couriers. It is believed that on his travels, he painted portrait of an African man. Between the years of 1525 and 1530, Jan Mostert painted Portrait of an African Man. I became interested in the portrait when I read that this painting may be the first known portrait to feature a specific and individual black man. The painting is a unique portrait of an African man not often seen in European Renaissance art. I wanted to learn more about the man in the portrait and the context behind the painting but much of the details of this portrait are unknown. There are plenty of theories and speculation as to who the man in the portrait is, and much of that stems from visual analysis. Portrait of an African man is not only a one-of-a-kind painting, but its real significance is that it shows that African presence in Renaissance Europe wasn't as uncommon as people believe. Jan Mostart is known for painting his portraits in three-quarter poses, and Portrait of an African Man is no exception. The man in the portrait is depicted wearing a rich red doublé, white gloves, an embroidered bag, an orange bonnet, and a sword on his waist. The dark, deep blue-green background complements the rich red doublé in such a way that you're compelled to believe this man is of significance and importance. His head is adorned with a very vibrant orange bonnet, and the bag is decadently embroidered in gold. The gloves are a clean white, and one hand is elegantly placed on the base of his sword. The handle of his sword is gold, and the style of the handle is very elegant. These suggest that the man has some presence in the court, and is a member in some way. It's also notable that sitting for a portrait is normally exclusive to religious leaders or wealthy nobility. The man's stance is also very elegant, and his pose alone reflects wealth and nobility. His dominant hand appears to be his right hand that is over the sword, and his less dominant hand is relaxed on the embroidered bag. He holds his head high and his presence is strong and assertive. There is very little context to the painting, but theories point to the African man belonging to the court and being a nobleman. The man's attire, along with his colorful accessories, suggests that he is a man of significance and wealth. Decorative and colorful clothing then was a sign of wealth. The the embroidered bag also suggests Spanish-Portuguese origins. There is no name for the man in the portrait, nor is there much of a story to attach them as well. But what we can assimilate from the portrait is a man of status and nobility. Personally, I find this portrait to be very fascinating. The unknown man in the portrait is shrouded in mystery, and to gain a better understanding as to who he may be, you have to carefully analyze every detail. The existence of this portrait displays the inclusion within the court hierarchy. Most notably is that this portrait is unique for featuring an African man in a Renaissance painting. Before I learned about this painting, I had never seen a Renaissance painting feature anyone other than white Europeans, and I was drawn to it for that reason alone. It's important that pieces like these are not lost and forgotten as they signify some inclusiveness for people of color in early 1500s Europe. Many of us have never seen a Renaissance painting of an African man and only think of white Europeans during that era in time.
However, it's important to understand that although art predominantly displayed portraits of white men and women, that people of color also existed during this time. This portrait is located in Amsterdam and is open on display to the general public. It is very common for works of art that depict people of color to be lost or destroyed over history. And so to see an African man hold status and nobility in a time where it wasn't so common is a very refreshing sight. I'll add source links in the description below if you want to learn more about Portrait of an African Man.